would be the biggest challenge of our lives. What a day! Yeah. Wow, it is absolutely stunning scenery. I'd say trying to survive here is going to be a completely different story. If we were to survive stranded for days on a cold, barren island, we needed some serious training. Top survival expert Paul Johnson had a tough job on his hands. The branches that we're going to use to make the roof of the shelter. Get to work. We need to sleep in this tonight. You're not wasting any here, no. are you? Every last little piece that you collect, you will want to use. Yeah. It could mean the difference between being miserably cold and wet and, warm. and being dry and warm. Well, the girls have come straight out of London, the big city. Yeah, it's a very different lifestyle. It's a very modern lifestyle. They're not used to working in this kind of environment. They're not used to this kind of dirty work. And to start with, it's all, uh, you know. Oh, oh yes. Hey. It's very good. The pressure here is to actually create a shelter that's good enough to sleep in tonight. Oh, I love what we've done with the place, Zoe. Oh, look at our handiwork. Beautiful yeah. beds. They're looking a little bit cold and miserable to yeah. me. Actually. Oh, yeah, but just required. you wait till we make them yeah. up. <laughs> What you're going to do is when you get out to a wild landscape, you know, you could be anywhere, you could be in Africa, you could be anywhere in the world, you're going to get the wild, dead wild grasses and then they'll make bedding materials. Hello, it's all itching down my top. It's right, you can have a wash in the pond later. We are clearly well behind schedule. If this was in the challenge, the girls would be in serious trouble at this point. They've got no fire going, they're still messing about getting the beds sorted out. We've had a lot of talk today not enough action at the right times. Without a fire and with the frost approaching, Paul wouldn't let us sleep out. We were failing already. It's all very well building shelters and stuff when you've got a nice strong man with an axe who can chop all the wood for you, but I just am worried as to whether we'll be able to do it all when we're sort of on our own in some hostile environment. Are we going to starve? Are we going to be able to build a shelter at all? Everyone has their phobias and their fears. I know Andy doesn't really like heights. Gethin hates the dark. Well, I absolutely hate the cold. And I know we're going to have lots of layers of clothing to keep us as warm as we possibly can. But nothing beats the sunshine. There are various grips with a knife. You can cut away at arm's length. Yeah. If you cut here, close to your body, this could slip and cut your femoral artery. Don't. You'd be dead in minutes. Oh. OK, think about safety. The other thing you see I've got here is a small first aid kit. There's a oh, bandage in there. It's got blood in it. Ah! <laughs> We'd be taking a survival kit, which would include a flint stick to start fires. See how quickly it starts? Cotton wool, very, very quick to light. Back of the blade, fist against the floor. So. You're bashing the pile with a flint, which is putting out the flame that you've just started. That's it. Yay. Straight away now. Right, OK. Now step back. It's our first fire. Let's sit by oh, our fire. Well done, us. What do you fancy for lunch? I hear there's some pheasant around these parts. Food would be a critical part of our survival, but like most of us, I don't usually have to think where the meat I eat comes from. Yeah, you've got the wing feathers, which are hard to remove. So you need to really get a grip on them. Literally just pull them pull away. Them ah, I touched it! I'm <laughs> being so stupid. I eat meat. I'm mm. so disappointed mm. in myself mm. that I'm being squeamish at Eight. pulling the feathers mm. off a bird. What we've got to do is instill in them the confidence to know that whatever the conditions, they just get on with it and get it done. Well done. Did I really do it? Yeah. Nice right. one. High five. Uh, actually, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking us in too gently. Yeah. I know we're not going to have carrots, onions, potato. Yeah. Okay. We might find, like, one prawn. <laughs> well, we have these lovely plates that you've presented us with. It might come under the luxury classification item. of luxury items. <laughs> yeah. And that clears I'll leave up. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. really hot now. That's good. That shows the shelter's working. It is odd when I usually go to bed wearing a thin pair of pyjamas to be in two pairs of trousers, five tops, two coats, and a pair of gloves. Still finding bits of bits of hay in my knickers. I feel like a baby. 
Night Zoo. Night Kong. It's quite funny. I always remember my dad telling me many, many years ago, um, if you're ever stranded anywhere, make sure you find some hay and some straw and get underneath it and you'll be kept really, really warm. And I thought to myself, hmm, when am I ever going to use such advice? I can't sleep. I'm going to be up again in like five hours. My feet are frozen. I have never had such cold feet in my life. I'm a little concerned about them. If they found it really hard last night in a shelter of this quality, they're going to uh, they're going to find it very hard when they're on their own. <laughs> you can see what happens when we face our big challenge on Thursday, Blue Peter. Come on, what are we going to do with this? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not here to look after you. Get active, get busy, sort yourselves out. You're just willing it all to go away, aren't you? I'm borderline miserable, wanting to really just get out of here. 